In this video I'm going to show you how to turn this polystyrene fruit box into a miniature mountain range just perfect for model railways or garden settings. It's a very simple process and a great way of recycling polystyrene. Along the way I'll show you some explosions, have a chat about the YouTuber's household hacker, I'll even throw in a little bit of bird watching. Before we get creative there's a warning. Okay, let's do it. You will require a foam box. I'm using what is known as a broccoli box. A quality craft knife. A felt tip marking pen. Some paint brushes and a very small amount of gasoline or turpentine. Two spray bottles. Acrylic paints in these colours. Grey, brown, black and white. First, draw out your mountain outline. It's up to you how rugged you need them. Also, divide the box in half lengthways. This single box will provide a lot of scenery. Carefully cut the foam box. Be sure to always cut away from you. Use a texture mark as a guide. There's no need to be precise in cutting here. Just careful cutting is required. Once all your cutting is done, separate your box. The box will provide you with four miniature mountains. Our next step involves etching the foam and must be done outdoors. Only a very light coat of gasoline is required for a deep etch. If using turpentine, a slower, more controlled etch can be done. The key is to work evenly over the foam. Before your eyes, the etch will take effect and create detail which will sell your miniature mountains. A thorough water wash is required after etching and before the next step, the foam must be completely dry. I did do a live voiceover in camera when making this video. The problem was there was a noisy bird which became a key audio feature. It had me having to strip in all the audio from scratch. Name that bird. I dare say it's an infant, but a very noisy one. There's another shot of that noisy intruder. That's his tail end you're looking at. Any bird watches out there? Name this noisy bird. Okay, we're back on the job. And we can clearly see the work done by etching the foam. I have assembled some sections side by side and others are layered. I am preparing a scene for a small video I am producing. I will attempt to recreate a scene where a bridge is blown apart. It's a job I did many years ago in a faraway land If you're a movie buff, do you know which American produced film this bridge featured in? There may be countries where this film is banned, that's my only clue. Just a note on the bridge piers. Rubbish is good. I use small disposable drink bottles as my bridge supports. I cut the neck off one bottle and slide it over the other one. Once fully detailed, they look exactly like concrete. Before I'm committed to setting down the landscape, I always do a rough line-up. This enables me to see if I have adequate dressing to fill all the scene. One issue of using widescreen format is you need wider sets to fill the frame. Once I'm happy, the next step is to paint the foam completely with grey paint. Every nook and cranny must be painted. This sets up a solid base to build your paint detailing process on. The next process is optional. I've added strength to my miniature mountains by incorporating a strip of core flute in the base. It's available in various sizes and colours. Core flute is light and strong, most commonly used as real estate signs. The secret to its strength lies in extrusion, featuring hollow fluting. I will use core flute interface to screw down my mountains to the set. Now it's time to add some movie magic via some simple scenic painting. You will need your paints, brush and spray bottles for the next process. 
we'll need to set up the paints in a special way. First the brown. Set it up thin down by 20% using water. This will be flicked on by brush over the mountains. The black and white paints are set up as a wash, thinned down by 80% using water. These will be applied by our spray bottles. The next step involves applying the brown paint via a flick of the wrist. I'd like to take this time to thank YouTuber's Household Hacker. Recently I had an important YouTube related issue. I knew the answer would lay in one of the mega tubers. One which knew their stuff. Who else would you call but Household Hacker? They replied to me quickly and in full detail. No copy and paste reply. It was for me a total surprise. This video is done very much in a style similar to Household Hacker. I have watched them from the early days and they have stuck to their winning formula. An important lesson is, no matter how big you think you are, stay connected to your audience. Ok, let's move on. Our next step is applying the black and white washes via the spray bottles. It may take several layers of painting to build up a desired effect. It's very much a random process and you will see the paints work together. It's important to set up light and dark areas to give a mountain illusion. Allowing the paints to dry between layers will help and applying stronger and less diluted washes may be needed in the final coats. I never thought I would ever make a video about watching paint dry. In the final detailing I feel it's very important to set up diagonal areas of contrast. This will help break up what is essentially a two dimensional piece. The real art is knowing when to stop. It's also important to be consistent with the effect over all your pieces. So keep an eye on your desired effect. Well it's time to line the mountains up and see how it looks. I'm happy as I now have some very fierce looking mountains which are inexpensive and fast to make. Apart from the painting details, lighting these mountains will need a special touch, but that's another video. I'm hoping I have explained in detail a simple and cheap method of creating very realistic miniature mountains made from foam boxes. Thank you for watching.